Hey folks, welcome to the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's talk about Impact Wrestling. First off, the viewership is out for last Thursday's show for Impact Wrestling, and it's not good at all. 111,000 people tuned in to watch Impact Wrestling. This was 18 to 49, ages 18 to 49, 111,000 people tuned in to watch Impact Wrestling. Not very good at all. The AEW Impact Wrestling partnership is not helping Impact at all, at all. The New Japan Pro Wrestling partnership with Impact is not helping Impact Wrestling at all. The viewership is going down. It's not going up. Impact Wrestling needs to do something and needs to do something fast. The competition is fierce here in the States. You have the WWE, you have Ring of Honor, you have AEW, you have MLW. Lots of lots of promotions vying to be amongst the top promotions in the United States. Impact Wrestling is lumped into that group. So what's Impact Wrestling? What can they do? What can Impact Wrestling do? Here's the first thing. First, first of all, the, the AEW Impact Wrestling Partnership. Let's talk about that for a second. Sorry. I think that's going to be, I think that's coming to an end soon. I think once Kenny Omega drops the title uh, to whoever he drops it to, it's probably most likely going to be Moose. I'd be very surprised if it was anybody but Moose. I think that partnership is going to end. I think the partnership with AEW and Impact Wrestling is going to end. The only thing that could keep it together are the Good Brothers. And I really think the Good Brothers are going to be leaving Impact Wrestling once their contract is up in 2022. I mean, look at Don Callis. Don Callis, executive vice president, gave up that position to go work for uh, AEW to be um, to Kenny Omega's full-time manager. So if the executive vice president doesn't want to stick with the company and and take a, an on-air role in in um, another uh, promotion, then um, you know why would the, <laughs> why would uh, why would the talent want to stay? I mean, I, I, I'm very happy that Moose did sign with Impact Wrestling, and they did um, they did remain. I mean, that was that was crucial to Impact Wrestling, and I'm glad that they're able to resign him. But uh, it doesn't look good when your executive vice uh, executive vice president decides to leave to go work for the uh, work for um, a rival promotion. But I think once Kenny Omega drops that title, drops the Impact Wrestling World Title and the TNA um, World Title, uh, I think that uh, that relationship will be over and done. Uh, so what's Impact Wrestling? What can they do? What can Impact Wrestling do? No Slam Anniversary is coming up, and they're they're um, promising some surprises. We might see some new talent. The Iconics uh, hopefully will sign with um, the, the the Inspiration now. Sorry, the Inspiration. Uh, we'll sign with uh, Impact Wrestling. Um, other names out there, maybe Kalisto uh, would be great for the X Division. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of talent out there, and they're they're promising a few surprises. Mickey James is as good with Impact as as good as in Impact Wrestling, in my opinion. They said we could expect uh, talent that's already working for another company. Mickey James worked with NWA, put two and two together, and Mickey James uh, most likely will be at Slammiversary. It, it's a very good bet that should be there. Uh, but what else can they do? Is, is that going to get the ratings up? Is that going to help with the ratings? Uh, I, I've been saying, I've been saying uh, in the past that they should have their own AEW Dark, where they develop new talents. New, young, exciting talents. I mean, we've we've seen uh, shades of, of uh, we've seen a Lee Moriarty here. We've seen a Trey Lamar there. Um, it's, they've been they've been one off though. Um, we've seen Blake Christian one or two times. And Blake Christian now with um, the NXT, uh, but um, they they're not really trying to develop new talent. Yes, okay. Well, they got uh, Sam Beal. We see Sam Beal is uh, is um, in Impact Wrestling, but they're not they're not getting. People aren't getting excited. People aren't, get, aren't getting excited about potential young talent that we could be seeing in Impact Wrestling. So they need, I've been saying this for a very long time, they need their own AEW Dark. But what can they do? What, 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 what could they possibly do? How could they, how could they achieve that? How could they be different? Here's an idea. And I read this online, and I think it's a great idea. I think Impact Wrestling should make themselves or do whatever they have to do to become the national promotion of Canada. Every, the, and I, I don't want to say every country, but the United States, they have national promotions. It's WWE, 
AEW. You could you could say Ring of Honor is a national promotion. They run from um they they run all over the United States. MLW they run shows all over the United States. You know, but the competition is 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 fierce as I said here in uh, the United States. Mexico, AAA, uh, CMLL, National Promotions of Mexico. There's no national promotion of Canada. Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Japan Pro Wrestling. Those are national promotions of Japan, but there's no national promotion of Canada. Lots of independent promotions, no national promotions. We got great, great talent in the Maritimes. Kobe Christ, Kaizen Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Got to get that Kobe Christ plug out there. Uh, we have great talent here in Ontario. We have great talents from coast to coast in Canada. And the the up and coming talents that we I mean the Aiden Prince, you know, Alexi Nicole, the up and coming talent that's here in Canada can become the AEW dark of Impact Wrestling. They could take the talent that's in Canada, and there's there's a there's a there are loads of talent up here in Canada that they could work with. They could have their own um, AEW dark show with the talent that's up here in Canada and develop new talent for Impact Wrestling. And they could run shows from BC out to the Maritimes and they can maybe get a national TV deal. You know, I don't know if this would happen, but CBC has Hockey Night in Canada. Maybe, just maybe, CBC could have a Pro Wrestling Night in Canada after Hockey Night in Canada where they show uh, Impact Wrestling live from, from Vancouver or, or Pro Wrestling live from, from the Montreal Forum or from, um, for, from Toronto or in, in Windsor. In Windsor, I'd be there. I mean, that, that, they, could have a live, they could have a weekly live show or a monthly live show on CBC or CTV. You know, I think that, w- that would be fantastic. I mean, there's no national promotion. I mean, you have Jeremy Prophet. Jeremy Prophet would be absolutely fantastic. In Impact Wrestling, especially if it was a national promo- the national promotion of Canada, Jeremy Prophet is uh, is a spokesperson for Canadian pro wrestling talent, in my opinion, and he would be fantastic. There's so much talent, so much talent. Josh Alexander, the X Division champion, without a doubt, could recommend some top talent that they could develop and be be the faces of Impact Wrestling for the next two, three years. I think it's a terrific idea. I think Impact Wrestling should think about it. No national promotion in Canada. There, It's wide open up here. Yes, the WWE will show up here and there on a, on a three-city uh, tour, but then head back down to the States. It's wide open, Impact Wrestling. It's wide open in Canada. Just do it. Even if, even if you consider changing your name to a more Canadian name, I think that would be terrific. I think that would be fantastic. They should definitely, definitely consider it. That's my opinion. My opinion is they should definitely consider it. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. And 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 let me know how you guys feel in the comment section. You know, comment on it. Let me know how you feel. All right. I just want to. Last thing I want to talk about here, Impact Wrestling, is as we know, there were numerous WWE releases uh, yesterday, and there's a couple of wrestlers that I think Impact Wrestling should definitely look at. Should definitely, definitely consider bringing in. Tony Nese, Killian Dane, and um, August Gray. August Gray, uh, should be, they should uh, definitely consider bringing him. August Gray, I should call him Anthony Green. I'm sorry. Uh, so Tony Nese, Anthony Green, Killian Dane. Uh, I think Killian Dane's going to be going as big da- uh, demo at Damo now. Uh, but those are three guys they should c- consider bringing in. Also, Aria Davari, uh, very, very talented uh, wrestler as well. Tyler Breeze of fan of Tyler Breeze. They have the Bollywood boys. You could you could bring in um you could bring in the Bollywood boys because Lord knows Impact Wrestling needs they need um um a, they need to bolster their tag team division. You could get Alexander Wolf and talk to him about teaming with Killian Dane again and uh, they were together in Sanity and have them come in as a tag team as well. You know, they could add two tag teams or you know Eric Young worked with Killian Dane, Alexander Wolf. Uh, in um, sanity, maybe reunite them, uh, but there's a lot of a uh, lot of talent out there uh, that I think they should definitely consider bringing in to Impact Wrestling. And the three, the three, the three names that I would definitely be looking at if I was Impact Wrestling, without a doubt, Tony Nice, Anthony Green, Killian Dane. I'm saying that because Tony Nice, 
he indicated on Twitter that uh, he works his ass off and he's ready to do it for the for the next company that he's going to work for. And uh, Anthony Green says he now has a chip on his shoulder. He's only 27 years old and he wants to prove to everybody that he is the best professional wrestler in the world. And Killian Dane says that he is not quitting. He's staying at wrestling. Sounds like he really has something he wants to prove to the WWE as well. And those are the guys that you want in Impact Wrestling. Anthony Green, tremendous, tremendous talent. Tremendous. I would, without a doubt, Tommy Dreamer actually, Tommy Dreamer actually tweeted out that, um, um, tweeted to Tony Nese saying that when his 90 day non compete is up, to contact him and um, he'll get him into Impact Wrestling. So hopefully we'll see that. But the three guys that I would like to see Tony Nese, Anthony Green, Killian Dane, we'll would love to see them in Impact, in Impact Wrestling. And hopefully we will see them. We'll see them soon. Hopefully, they can get that 90-day non-compete uh, waived, and they could uh, sign with uh, other promotions quicker. But definitely, Impact Wrestling should definitely be, you know. And I want to keep repeating myself. I don't want to bore it, bore every, get anybody bored. But once again, I'm going to say because these are three guys that I think could definitely make an impact in Impact Wrestling. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> Tony Nese, Anthony Green, Killian Dane. They should definitely be looking at them. All right, on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening to me today. I'm Lewis Carlin. This is the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network podcast. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.